Hey everyone, Jared here from Truck Safe Consulting. In this video, we're going to focus on the Driver Vehicle Inspection Report, or DVIR process. I'll answer some critical questions like when does a driver have to complete a DVIR? What are the responsibilities of motor carriers in the DVIR process? And what does a good DVIR process look like? So stay tuned, and if you're watching on YouTube, please like and subscribe below so you can stay up to date on all of our free DOT compliance related content. I often hear a lot of confusion from drivers and motor carriers alike surrounding the DVIR process. Part of this confusion is related to the intersection of pre and post trip inspections on the one hand and the DVIR process on the other. So first, let's separate the two. For motor carriers operating commercial motor vehicles, pre-trip inspections are required by the safety regulations in part 396.13. Part 396 also requires that post-trip inspections be conducted by motor carriers. The pre- and post-trip inspection process should be logged by the driver as on-duty time and annotated as pre-trip or post-trip on their logs. In many cases, this is the extent of the documentation required for pre- and post-trip inspections, but sometimes a DVIR must be completed. The DVIR requirements are found in Part 396.11 of the FMCSRs, before we talk about these requirements in detail, let's first discuss a critical distinction related to your operation specifically. If you're a passenger carrying motor carrier operating commercial motor vehicles, your drivers must always complete a DVIR following the post-trip inspection. On the other hand, if you're a property carrying motor carrier operating commercial motor vehicles, a DVIR is only required when a defect is discovered that would affect the safe operation of the vehicle or result in a mechanical breakdown. So some examples of the items that would trigger the need for a DVIR would be steering mechanism issues, inoperable windshield wipers or horn, wheel or rim damage, and tire damage or excessive wear on tread. From a process standpoint, if a headlight goes out or if a tire goes flat during the day, the driver should list this defect on a DVIR. The DVIR should then be submitted to the motor carrier and ultimately to the mechanic who would then make sure the defect is corrected before the vehicle is operated again. Both the driver and mechanic should sign the DVIR. DVIR should be kept for 90 days after completion, but I often recommend that they be housed in the vehicle maintenance file for 24 months along with the proof of repair. And my reasoning here is that this demonstrates a strong commitment to safety and compliance should the FMCSA ever look at your DVIR compliance. And along these lines, in past audits and compliance investigations, I've seen the FMCSA assess an acute violation in situations where a driver fails to list a defect on a DVIR after that defect was discovered during a roadside inspection. So roadside data is always a heavy focal point in any audit. And for this reason, roadside data is a great place to start for many motor carriers in assessing compliance with the DVIR requirements and making sure you're more prepared for an audit. So let's talk about your DVIR process. Many ELD solutions now offer a DVIR submission process that can seamlessly transmit a DVIR to the motor carrier's mechanic and there's no paper involved. However, if you're a motor carrier that still uses paper, that's not a problem but the process should really flow the same. The driver generates the DVIR, which makes its way to the mechanic, and both the driver and mechanic sign upon the defect being remedied. I'll pause here to note that there are instances where a driver might discover a defect that would not affect the safe operation of the vehicle or result in a mechanical breakdown. So for example, if the air conditioning is not working. In this instance, a DVR shouldn't be generated by a property carrying motor carrier. And this is why driver training is critical to avoid unnecessary DVIRs and wasted resources. According to the FMCSA's interpretation of 396.11, even those defects that have been corrected before the post-trip inspection is done should still be listed on the DVIR. Meaning, even if a driver replaces a headlight that was out, this should still generate a DVIR at the end of the driver's day. 
The only difference here is that a mechanic would not be required to sign off on this DVR since the driver already corrected the issue. Instead, we usually recommend that drivers in these situations sign off on the DVIR as having corrected the issue. So that's going to wrap up this video. If you're in need of a sample DVIR, make sure you check out our library of DOT compliance documents on our website, which is trucksafeconsulting.com. And if you're interested in even more in-depth discussions of the federal safety regulations, take a look at our comprehensive online compliance courses for drivers and safety managers at trucksafeacademy.com. Thanks for watching and be well.